Hello, welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 22. Thank you for joining me today. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would love it if you did. Today I'm going to talk to you about the ends of your stitches. This may be something you've never thought about much before. I've never seen it written on and I've never heard anyone talk about it before. So maybe it's just me that thinks about these things. I don't know. The best way I can show you is with some examples of running stitch and back stitch. So here along on my, on my fabric I have a line at the top of running stitch and a line at the bottom of spaced back stitches. And I've tried to make them the same length as each other um, with the same spacing and everything so that they are as much of comparison as I can make them. Now if we look across the surface of this, very difficult for me to do this with my computer camera. <laughs> Um, the one at the back is the line of running stitch and the one at the front is the line of back stitch. I can see and I hope you can see as well that the line of back stitch, the, sit, the stitches sit up higher than the ones of running stitch at the back. And this is because when you have a running stitch each running stitch comes in straight from the previous one. The thread just remains like that. When you have back stitch, each stitch has a fold at the end of the stitch. So here, our back stitch starts here, goes back to there, folds, comes back to here, folds, comes back to here, folds, comes back to here, folds, folds, folds. I don't know if that's clear to you, I hope that it is. But what I've been thinking about recently is the fact that when you have a stitch with a fold at the end, like we do with those back stitches, it can make a difference to how the stitch sits on the surface of the fabric. So I thought about the other stitches that this might have an effect on. And ones that I thought that it might have an effect on are satin stitch. Um, not satin stitch worked say for um, surface embroidery but satin stitch worked on counted embroidery where you've got lots of satin stitch close together and you need to move from one to the other and I've wondered if it might have an effect for that. I also thought about lines of bullion stitches so where they're lined up one after the other like a caterpillar perhaps and I wondered whether that might make a difference. Another one that I thought of was seeding stitch, the filling stitch, whether it might have an effect on that. So I've had a little bit of a play with these stitches and I'm going to show them to you and see whether I think it makes any difference and you can decide for yourself. If you are unsure from what I show you, then may I suggest you try it for yourself. And if you've got any other suggestions for stitches that you think it might affect, I'd love to hear from you. And if you've got any examples of them, I'd love to see them. So here we have our running stitch line and here we have our back stitch line. And to my mind, I think that the ends of the back stitches look a little more sharp than the ends of the running stitches because the running stitches just continue on whereas these have a definite end because there's a fold because the stitch is worked so that you go around in that sort of shape. Okay so here we have two bits of satin stitch. The one here at the bottom starts with the thread coming in like this and then spiraling around till it finishes by going out at the bottom. The one here comes in from this side, that's where it starts, and spirals around and finishes here and goes out that side. To me there is a small difference there that these stitches here don't look as good as those stitches there. I also feel that this is flatter than the folded end stitch. It's certainly longer, you can see it right out to here, whereas the folded end stitch goes to here. So I do think there's a difference. For me that's an important difference for you. 
you might not feel it makes enough of a difference. Here we have my two examples of seeding stitch. This one is worked in basically running stitch and this one is worked in back stitch. So for this one I tried to move straight on to the next stitch as much as possible without changing direction. For this one I deliberately tried to make each stitch finish on the far side so I might have gone from there to there to there to there to there so I'd end up at the far end of where I wanted to go next. Um, I do feel that they are slightly shorter and plumper than those ones. It's a very small difference though and you might not feel that it's a worthwhile difference. But again, I just wanted to figure out if it made a difference. Here we have two lines of bullion stitches. These ones are worked so that they continue straight on to the next one. These ones here are worked so they come up at the far end and go down there. And so these ones are more like a running stitch. These ones are more like a back stitch. And I can see that these ones here, the back stitch type ones, so the ones where I started at the far end, went back, far end, went back, far end, went back, sit up a little higher than the ones which don't. These ones are reasonably flat compared. So these ones I started here, went to here, started here, went to here, here, went to here, so here, went to here. Um, and so they are more of a running stitch sort of shape. Okay, so we're looking at them from a slight angle this time and you can see that there is a bit more of a gap underneath these than there is with these ones. Now the way this sits up is because of the way these are stitched, but you could actually get the same effect by just over wrapping these bullions and having them sit up because of that. So putting too many wraps in for the distance that it needs to span. So yeah, it does make a difference. Whether it's a worthwhile difference, I don't know. And you can achieve that difference in other ways. So here we have the running stitch version of the seeding stitch and this is the back stitch version of the seeding stitch. And you can see that, and this is also a satin weave of fabric, you can see particularly this stitch here sits in amongst the weave a lot more than these ones here do. And that's partly because it's a running stitch and so therefore it sits flatter, but also partly because this goes across the weave of the fabric. So again, it makes a small difference, it doesn't make a huge difference. It's a difference that you might not think is worthwhile, you might also think that it is worthwhile. So I've convinced myself that there is a difference between a straight ended stitch and a fold ended stitch and the way it sits and looks. It's a small difference, I admit that. But for me, I want to get the best results out of my embroidery and if I feel that that actually contributes to making a better result, then it's something that I will do. Uh, it's up to you whether you decide that it's worthwhile for you or not and you might actually like to play around with it to see whether you think it's worthwhile or not. Maybe you haven't been able to see the difference enough by looking at it on my screen. Maybe you need to try it out for yourself and I certainly encourage you to do that. So if you'd like to play around with some stitches, I highly recommend that you get yourself a copy of my left-handed or right-handed embroiderer's companion. In them, there are step-by-step -step instructions taking you through many, many different stitches. Uh, so that's all I have to say today. You may think that that was a complete waste of time. I found it helpful and interesting to investigate and I hope you've gain some value from it as well. Thanks so much for joining me today. See you next time.